This is Zen English Podcast, a mini podcast trying to help you focus on some of the more important things to keep in mind when learning and living another language. I hooked you with the name of this podcast, Finding Time for Your English, because it's not really possible to find time for learning English or any other foreign language. Time is not a lost sock or your misplaced reading glasses. You cannot just find time. When we think of time in those terms as something you can find, it's too passive of a concept. It finds us as victims of the clock. Think of this as being a master of your language, a master of your intellect, and a master of your moments. We must make the time for the learning, studying, assimilating, and living of our English. I've heard so many times from students and friends saying that they don't have time for English. Well, what can be done when one doesn't have a birdhouse, for example? It can be made. You must fabricate the key moments for the study of English just as you would fabricate the birdhouse from the necessary raw materials. The raw materials of time are the moments of your day combined with the emotions and psychological states that you carry within your heart and mind. This is much more complex than the mere hands on a clock or the digital numbers on your watch or cell phone. With this proper perspective of understanding what time is exactly, you can take a new track on just how to maneuver throughout your day and include English in there somewhere. Start by realizing that one of the biggest obstacles to making time for your English is probably when you try to bite off more than you can chew. Biting off more than you can chew is an expression which means that you're trying to do more than you reasonably can. You're trying to get too much done. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach and you can't fit all the food in. Try biting off less. Reduce your goals. Minimalize what you're trying to get done in the short term to win in the long run. This is counterintuitive. This is thinking about getting things done in a different way because we're changing the perspective on what we're trying to accomplish, how often, when, and in what time frame. The truth is you're never going to accomplish very much in one moment of English consumption in a day. But that's okay. And it's the right thing to do. As the expression says, Rome was not built in a day. You can accomplish more and achieve greater things in overall less time than you would ever think possible if you employ things like consistent, penetrating, ever-present, quality, focused, and pleasurable participation with your English instead of thinking of it as a chore that you have to go up against, like cleaning the bathroom or sweeping the floor. It is paramount to perceive the few moments that you're going to make for your English as the carpenter perceives the wood, the nails, and the paint for her birdhouse. They are tiny pieces that will eventually come together and make a great edifice. And that's just the way a bird sees that birdhouse. That edifice is its home, and it is great. The opportunities we can make for living our English have been seen throughout this series of podcasts. We've seen things like listening to your music instead of just hearing it, marrying the moments of your day to your English study instead of actual times in order to incorporate it organically into your life. We've talked about thinking in English whenever possible. And as always, we've mentioned being creative and thinking outside the box in order to accomplish original thought and original creations in English. You are now in a position to be the curator of your English, just as the birdhouse maker curates her birdhouse. You maintain it. You take care of it. You love it. As you do indeed curate your English, you will find that it is not necessary to eliminate other actions from your day in order to make time. 
You may have thought that was necessary, but just remember, by making time instead of finding time, we are raising a new metaphysical structure that will exist parallel to our already existing daily activities. Living your English is making time for your English. It's a game. It's a sport. It's building a birdhouse. It isn't something to be loathed and feared. It is your creation to enjoy and foster. These are some solid ideas to keep in mind when trying to not find time, but make time for your English. This has been Zen English Podcast.